From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Afternoon Edition. It's disheartening. I probably am homeless. Right now in the Afternoon Edition, residents returning home after floodwaters force evacuations in a North Bay community. Good afternoon, I'm Brian Yamamoto. The recent storm dumped heavy rain overnight, leaving a trail of damage all across the Bay Area. We have team coverage on this first alert weather day. Meteorologist Jessica Birch is tracking the rain. But first, let's go to Sean Chitness in Guerneville, where people living in Sycamore Court now dealing with knee deep water. Hey, Sean. The cleanup began early this morning as folks were trying to figure out just how much damage they were facing in this neighborhood here in Guerneville. As you see behind me, there is still plenty of water that has surrounded the homes, cars and other belongings that make up this neighborhood. The water coming up to folks at their knees as they were walking from one place to the other, trying to find whatever belongings they could salvage what didn't get damaged from the flooding, even one refrigerator floating by. And we know that the water came up to at least the tire line of some cars higher in other places. We spoke to some families that knew that their home had flooded, and that's why they were trying to take out whatever they could before they were seeking shelter with the Red Cross. Others left last night as the sheriff's office and the fire department were knocking on doors, asking people to evacuate, and then coming back this morning to see the amount of damage, worried that their homes may have been lost, only to learn that just barely the flooding had missed their trailer. It's disheartening. I probably am homeless, so I, I, I just don't have words. It's, it's scary and it's sad. And it happens just so fast. It's and like no warning. Like there was no water on the ground from what I understood. And like 20 minutes later, all the water was on the ground. So the fire department knocking on the trailer and there was about three inches of water in the trailer. Um, and so we started moving stuff up off the floor, called my husband who was at work to come pick us up because we knew we had to walk out. Um, and then waited for him to get here and packed all our stuff, including all our animals, and headed out. And those that live in this neighborhood say that they are used to it. Unfortunately, they face this type of flooding year after year, and the frustration only grows as they hope and wish that there is more that either those at the local level or the state level could help them. At least this time, some homes were spared, while others will have to come back and start to begin the cleanup process once the water clears. And that flooding has forced the Guerneville School District to cancel classes today. Now to Santa Cruz, where an apartment complex was also flooded. Our Mary Lee continues our team coverage. Well, it is a mess out here. Now, thankfully, the water has receded, but take a look at what it looked like earlier this morning. You can see a uh, major flooding going on here in Santa Cruz at this apartment complex. This is the Cypress Point apartment complex on Felix Street. You can see several inches of water on the roadway. The water just covering the street out here, and I want to show you the reason why. Now, behind this apartment complex is a creek, and heavy rain overnight and this morning caused that creek to flood, sending water into the apartment complex and flooding the street as well. We spoke to residents who were out here this morning just checking to see if their cars are still working because of the flooding. We spoke to one woman, Guadalupe, who said her sister's car was flooded at this apartment complex. Take a listen. She came out at like 3 in the morning to check on her car and the water was knee high because her boyfriend got home from work because he works at the hospital and he was like, it's flooded really bad check on your car uh, the apartment complex behind us uh, last night it was maybe a f almost a foot deep at the bottom of the stairs which I can show you as well but uh, that blue car over there the water was almost up to the headlights at one point the resident you just heard from Adrian told us that this is the worst he's seen it here at this apartment complex. Now let's take you out to Saratoga. This is State Route 9. Earlier this morning we were out there and State Route 9 from Big Basin Way to Sanborn to Redwood Gulch all closed because of a massive mudslide. So crews are out there trying to clean it up as well as block off the roadway uh, to keep people safe from that major mudslide. We were out there. We saw a lot of dirt and debris, tree limbs on the roadway, just trying to get up to State Route uh, 9. And this is as far as we could get there on Big Basin Way. So a lot going on, a big mess, a lot of cleanup now with this storm. Back to you. 
All right, thanks, Mary. And taking a live look outside right now. That rain has let up just a bit, but you can see still dark and gray outside. Those clouds looking kind of a little scary. ominous right now. Yeah, uh, left a little soggy mess in cloudy afternoon. Let's get right out to Jessica Birch in our virtual studio. So, Jess, uh, where's the rain right now, and is it coming back? It's starting to finally die down. I mean, since Friday, we've been seeing storm system after storm system, and in total, we've seen over two inches of rainfall in areas like Oakland, and we got close to two inches in San Francisco. Now, the more east we went off in areas like Antioch and Concord. We never actually passed that inch mark, but it was a pretty impressive storm this morning because we saw a lot of rain down in the Santa Clara Valley, which is usually interesting with these types of storms, and that ended up getting us close to that two inch mark near San Jose and Los Gatos and we actually passed two inches closer to Fremont. If you think that's impressive, watch what happens as we head up into the North Bay. Santa Rosa, over three inches from this exact system that moved its way in from the north, and we're continuing to see more rainfall right now in certain communities. To believe it or, believe it or not, we're actually starting to clear up a lot. You saw those live looks just a second ago. Lots of low-hanging clouds, but the drizzle is starting to die down. Down into the Santa Clara Valley, we're seeing drier conditions there. Up into the hills, just past areas like Livermore, all the way up closer to Dublin, too, we're seeing drier conditions. Now, as we extend into the evening hours tonight, we could still see some pockets of storms move throughout the Bay Area. It's going to be a partly cloudy night for us tonight. A very similar trend tomorrow. These drizzly conditions die down into the overnight hours along our coastline, too. And then we're just left with drier conditions all throughout the Bay Area. But this has caused a lot of issues up in the Sierra, too, and I want to talk more about that coming up in just a bit. All right, thanks, Jess. And San Mateo crews are busy working to clear this giant tree. That tree fell this morning on top of some cars, shut down a road in the city's Baywood, Aragon neighborhood. Video from the scene shows broken windows, those damaged cars right there. That was a big tree. Traffic is blocked off on West 4th Avenue from Dartmouth Road to El Camino Real. The road is expected to close or be closed until 1 o'clock. So stay with us for continuing coverage on the rain, flooding, and road closures. We'll bring you the very latest on air and online at kpix.com and streaming on the free CBS News app. Other stories we're following this afternoon. Workers at San Francisco State University protested outside in the rain this morning. It's part of a system-wide week-long strike. The union representing tens of thousands of Cal State faculty are on the picket lines today demanding a 12 percent pay increase. School administrators offering 5 percent campuses will remain open. And tonight, the top four candidates in the race for U.S. Senate in California will debate in Los Angeles. The top two finishers in the March 5th primary will advance to the general election in November. And with just one day to go before New Hampshire's first in the nation primary, the race for the Republican presidential nomination is officially down to two candidates, former President Donald Trump and his former U.N. ambassador Nikki Haley. Penny Komet has the latest from Manchester. Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley stepped up her attacks against former President Trump as she campaigned in New Hampshire one day before the state's first in the nation primary. Chaos follows him, and we can't have a country in disarray and a world on fire and go through four more years of chaos. We won't survive it. The former U.N. ambassador is now Trump's only challenger for the GOP nomination after Florida Governor Ron DeSantis dropped out Sunday. It's clear to me that a majority of Republican primary voters want to give Donald Trump another chance. Trump said Sunday he appreciated DeSantis's endorsement and called Haley unelectable. The radical left Democrats are supporting Nikki for a very simple reason, because they know she's easy to beat. While the latest polling shows Trump with a big advantage among Republicans in New Hampshire, independents known as undeclared are the biggest voting bloc in the state, and they're allowed to participate in the Republican primary. So while Trump maintains a double-digit lead, Haley is focused on turning out those people in the middle. And President Biden's name is not on the New Hampshire ballot because he's following the Democratic Party's decision to make South Carolina its first primary state.